Today we celebrate the Mass of the sixth Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends in Christ, as we come before the Lord today, we give thanks to him for his grace and blessing as we continue to observe these Easter days. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence as we acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died that we might live. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you rose again for our salvation. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you were with us always, even to the end of time. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, paid him homage. Peter, however, raised him up, saying, Get up, I myself am also a human being. Then Peter proceeded to speak and said, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all that were listening to the word. The circumcised believers who had accompanied Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit should have been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they could hear them speaking in tongues and glorifying God. Then Peter responded, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people or have received the Holy Spirit even as we have? He ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Our response to God's word, the Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. 
The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my father will love him and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. <clears throat> this I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and <clears throat> of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Some weeks ago, <clears throat> after Sunday Mass, a young man stopped me in the back of the church. He is not from this neighborhood, but he often comes to Sunday Mass here. And he talked about enjoying coming to Mass in our church and how he tries to pay attention to the readings of the Mass. He told me that every week he tries, tries to do something at Mass. He tries to take one sentence or even one phrase from the Gospel reading and to keep it in his mind throughout the whole week ahead. I told him that I thought that was a wonderful idea and I also told him that I wanted to share it with you. Just to take a few words from the gospel and let those words guide you throughout the week, thinking upon them, pondering their meaning, and applying them to yourself. Think of the gospel we have just heard. There are so many words that can guide us in our lives. 
Our Lord says, for instance, love one another as I love you. And that is certainly a phrase important for us to remember. And the Lord also says those beautiful words, I no longer call you slaves, I call you friends. And what a beautiful thing that the Lord considers us his beloved friends. But there is another phrase which I suggest that we remember from this gospel. Another phrase to guide us not only in the week ahead, but throughout our lives. And it is this. Our Lord says, it was not you who chose me. Rather, it is I who chose you to go and bear fruit. It was I who chose you. Those words were said, dear friends, to the apostles at the Last Supper. They are a reminder to the apostles that Jesus called them, chose them, and gave them the grace to answer the call. The Lord chose those apostles to be his witnesses in the world, to go literally to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the gospel of the Lord Jesus' saving love. The Lord chose those apostles to go forth and bear much fruit. But dear friends, the point is that the Lord did not stop choosing when he chose those apostles. He has chosen people ever since. He has chosen each one of us to go forth, to bear fruit. Remember, the Lord knows us. He knows who we are. He loves us as we are. And he chooses us for whatever reason to serve him and to serve his people in some particular way. Often, when we hear the words, the Lord choosing people, we think of the great saints, Mother Teresa, St. Anthony, St. Teresa, our own saint. Certainly, the Lord chose them, but not only them. The Lord chooses you, and in the Lord's eyes, the task that he gives to each person is as important as the task that he gave to the apostles. Let me mention some of the people that the Lord is choosing right now. Some people who touch our lives and bear much fruit. First, certainly during this pandemic, we understand that the Lord has chosen valiant doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals whose profession we have come to respect even more. We call them heroes, and fittingly so, because they have put themselves on the line to tend the sick, particularly those suffering from the virus. The Lord chose them, but that did not mean that their work was easy. It certainly was not. During the height of the pandemic, I heard from a nurse who called me regularly just to ask for prayers, not only for her patients, but for herself, that she would have God's grace to carry on her work. Often I reminded her that the Lord was choosing her and the other people with her to be his hands, helping the sick, bringing them comfort and hope. God bless her and all the others like her for doing just that. And then someone else the Lord chooses. I think of teachers 
who have had to work doubly hard to teach not only the children physically in front of them in their class, but to teach the children who are learning online, trying to make them feel that they too are part of their class even though physically they are not there. Certainly the Lord chooses teachers and gives them the grace to do far more than is expected of them. God bless these teachers who have not, not only a job, but a vocation, a calling for which the Lord has chosen them. And then I think of someone else, or shall I say someone's else, whom the Lord chooses. This Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day. As we think of and pray for mothers, living and deceased. The Lord chooses mothers to be mothers, and he gives them the grace to help their children grow in every aspect of life. Pope St. John Paul II said that the greatest vocation that the Lord gives to a woman is the vocation of being a mother. Mothers, more than anyone else, know how hard it can be, particularly at this time. They must help their children, of course, to get through this pandemic safely. But they must help their children to get through a worse kind of pandemic, the pandemic that our children see in the society of today. Violence, crime, loss of respect for one another, the belittling of people for living a God-fearing life, the loss of a sense of family, and all the other distractions that our young people and their mothers and fathers must face. But mothers should remember, when the Lord chooses someone, he gives that person the grace to accomplish the task. He is there always to help those that he chooses to bear fruit with his grace. And he is certainly there to help all mothers. And his mother, Mary, is there to help them too. It was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you to go forth and bear fruit. I thank that young man for his suggestion to keep a short phrase of the gospel in mind, and I hope that you will do that. I hope that you will keep in mind the thought that the Lord really chooses you. I hope you will keep in mind that the Lord, in choosing you, always knows what he is doing. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified, 
under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him, saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy Cardinal Dover, and all the leaders of the church, that they will continue to guide us in the way that Jesus has taught. We pray to the Lord. That following the words of the gospel today, we will be mindful of the great love that Jesus has for us, even to dying on the cross for us whom he calls friends. We pray to the Lord. That during this Easter season, Many souls will come home to the Lord and to the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. For all mothers, grandmothers, and those who act in the place of mothers, that they will be given the strength to carry on their vocation of serving their families faithfully. We pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women, particularly those from our parish, that the Lord will guide them and keep them in safety. We pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and healthcare professionals who are serving us so faithfully, that the Lord will continue to guide and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. For our sick, particularly those suffering from the virus, and for our beloved dead, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayers in silence. Let us put all of our prayers in the hands of our Blessed Mother as we say her prayer together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come <clears throat> to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, 
for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings we present, so that, purified by your grace, we may be conformed to the mystery of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord God, Holy Father, through Jesus, your Son. He has made us children of the light, rising to new and everlasting life. He has opened the gates of heaven to receive us, his faithful people. His death is our ransom from death, and his resurrection is our rising to life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you. As without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. <clears throat> For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty love, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> and our Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the body of Christ keep us safe, the return of life, amen. We invite you now to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart. Before we come to the final prayer and the blessing, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the holy sacrifice of the Mass today. We particularly offer our prayer for mothers, and grandmothers, and those acting as mothers as we celebrate this special day. May our Blessed Mother Mary help you to remain true to your beautiful vocation of serving your family. 
We pray that the Lord will bless all families and keep them in safety and good health. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Easter Sabbath and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.